Hey guys, check out my latest podcast on Gavin Richard Presents, only on Anchor and Spotify. That's right, guys. We have moved to podcasts, so now we are heard all over the internet. I just don't do YouTube. Of course, you can't stop me. Uh, we do talk about a whole course of issues, whether it's race, politics, sports, entertainment, you name it, we claim it. So please check out the podcast Gavin Richard Presents on Anchor and Spotify. I'll holla. Peace. Welcome to another edition of Gavin Richard Presents here on my channel, Gboot2786. Whoever you are, wherever you are, I hope you are blessed and doing safe this uh, Saturday afternoon right now. It's a beautiful day, no rain, it's just hot. But uh, nevertheless, it's a good day. But I wanted to bring this to your attention now. I talked about this on a live stream before, uh, but this concerns, of course, the Xavier and Dillard University issuing this joint letter to their student body as well as their faculty and staff uh, talking about their participation in a COVID-19 vaccination trial. Now the letters from President C. Reynolds Verrett and Walter Kimballo, they have claimed that they received injections as part of the Ochsner medical system study. In the, a letter that penned to the students, they encourage others in the black community to also be participants to also be participants. I'm gonna read the letter here. You say, it says here, our communities have been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic with harrowing consequences for the lives and health of our fellow citizens. Overcoming the virus will require the availability of vaccines effective for all people in our communities, especially our black and brown neighbors. Phase three vaccine trials have begun across the nation, including New Orleans. It is of the most utmost importance that a significant number of black and brown subjects participate so that the effectiveness of these vaccines be understood across the many diverse populations that comprise these United States. Now, both Verrett and Kimbrough said they received these injections and have been monitoring and reporting any systems that, symptoms that they have. They also understated that they understood the possible risk by participating in the trial. Now, this did not sit well with many of the people in the comments section, including yours truly. Uh, you can see what I wrote here. Uh, you know, uh, Xavier and Dillard, as a member of a family that is filled with Xavier alumni, I have to ask you all, what in the world are you smoking? How can you try and suggest that students enroll in an experimental vaccination that to my knowledge the United States does not even does not even officially have? Those things must be approved by the FDA and they can take time. This is irresponsible. I made the decision to go to Southern University of Baton Rouge and now I don't regret it. And people uh, applauded my response. Uh, one lady wrote, this does not reflect the views of the students or alumni. As a daughter of, uh, Kent, that was Lisa Coleman, Kelly Howe, Kelly Ho says, as a daughter of both Southern and Xavier, I promise you this ain't the way Xavier University rolled under Norman Francis. Norman Francis was the uh, longtime president of Xavier University here. My parents went to, were in school, that's how they met at Xavier University when Norman Francis was running everything. We've been ringing the alarm on these charlatan board members and president for six years now. now I can believe that. And you just look at the comments. People are saying this. This is disheartening. Norman C. would never. <laughs> that's trailing. That's my dude uh, who says that. Oh, I'm reading this one of the sisters. How did we get here? No Xavierite is supposed to be here. The Tuskegee experiment sacrificed enough. Henrietta Lacks sacrificed enough. We don't need to lead the way in this breakthrough with our lives. I agree with everyone in their comments. Now, let me just read further, okay? They say, we the presidents of the, so they've already stated that they've participated in the current trial. And upon our enrollment, we were fully informed 
and any possible risks that would exclude us from the study were disclosed, we are both well. We appeal to the students, faculty, and staff, and alumni of Dillard Xavier and our siblings institutions to participate in this trial or others being conducted. The people and communities we serve look to us as an example. Our participation in such studies will help find ways to better fight the pandemic. Now, this is something that they did. They volunteered to do this. And when you read this letter and go through it, it is not mandatory that they force, they can't not force students to, they're not in this letter forcing students to get vaccinations. However, by them encouraging that, by saying, well, we did it, we did it, you know, they are certainly uh, prodding and certainly trying to encourage the student body and faculty members and others to get uh, vaccinated. And something that, I, like I said before, the United States, to my knowledge, doesn't even have a vaccine for this. And vaccines can take years to develop. This is not something that happens overnight. You know, I know that Russia has stated that they found a vaccination. Putin said something like that. I believe China is developing a vaccine. A lot of countries try to develop drugs and so forth to treat uh, a pandemic or a virus, you know, to treat a pandemic or a virus. But, you know, there's no way that these things are guaranteed. And, you know, the fact that as you read further, they specifically mention Tuskegee, uh, unethical examples of medical research, as you see. As presidents of HBCUs, we do recall unethical examples of medical research. We remember the Tuskegee syphilis study, which misused and caused harm to African Americans and other people of color, undermining trust in health providers and caretakers. Today, there are many regulations in place to ensure the ethical execution of medical studies, including oversight by human subjects committees, with diverse membership and participation of clinicians of color. Two of the leading physicians are doctors Julia Garcia Diaz and Evans Laborde. That don't mean shit. Let me just be real about it. You know, we have had, if you saw the movie Miss Ever's Boys with Alfred Woodard, there was a black woman, that was a black woman who was there assisting in the Tuskegee Syphilis program. And that was a movie that HBO did based on that with Alfred Woodard and uh, Lawrence Fishburne. So having a black physician or Hispanic, you know, it looks like a uh, Hispanic physician doesn't impress me. You know, I'm, we've gotten out of that whole symbolism thing. You know, I'm seeing more and more our people are caring about substance now rather than, you know, symbolic victories. Of course, we like to see black doctors and lawyers and judges. I'm a lawyer myself. We love to see uh, black people get theirs, but damn it, having people in places of being a doctor and you're trying to get us to do an experimental vaccination or to do anything like that, especially when we're not getting a benefit out of it, does not impress the people anymore. You can't keep doing it. But I go further. The letter states, we hope that you will consider enrolling you may send an email or call and leave a message at this number. We have before us a significant opportunities to serve. I was just paraphrasing on that. To serve and advance the cause for not just ourselves, but our sisters and brothers suffering from the effects of this virus and on their families and communities. Now, I believe the presidents of Dillard and Xavier spoke to WDSU, so we're going to check that out right now. So hold on historically black colleges in New Orleans are asking their students to participate in clinical vaccine trials for COVID-19. The school's presidents say that they've already participated in this themselves. WDSU's Sherman DeSalle spoke with them and joins us live from Dillard's campus with the latest. Yeah, both pre both President Kimbrough and President Barrett have participated in this trial. This is the phase three clinical trial and it's administered by the Oshner Medical Center. They said that they received injections a couple of weeks ago and so far they feel fine. Also in the open letter that they sent out to their campus today, they said it's important for minority students 
to be a part of this study in minority communities as well, since those same groups have been heavily impacted by COVID-19. They also pointed out the unethical examples of medical research, like the Tuskegee syphilis study or the Tuskegee experiment. This was a clinical trial done with sharecroppers in now notice that in that letter, and I'm going to keep playing the video in a second, but just notice that they had to point all of that stuff out in the letter to try and get the people to get the students more relaxed and bring more relaxed, I guess, in going into this vaccination study. Just pay attention to that. Alabama in the 1930s, it resulted in the deaths of nearly 100 men due to men due to bad ethics and leaving a lot of families sick for decades. But despite that, the school leaders say that this trial is ethical and people should consider taking a chance on it. We are the benefit. We are the beneficiaries of these medical of these medical innovations, right? We need to be able to make them happen for us and for our people. We're seeing that already. People are just like, nope, I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. It's like that's fine. But hopefully we'll reach out to some people who will say, you know what, I, this is something that I can do and I'm comfortable doing it. Now, again, this sounds like these Negroes got some money thrown at them. This is administered by Oshner Medical Center and it is voluntary. It's not mandatory for this campus. Hear from one of the lead physicians in this study, as well as someone who participated in it in the next hour. Reporting from Gentilly, Sherman DeSalle, WDSU News. All right, so that was WDSU. Uh, thank you, WDSU and Sherman DeSalle. By the way, I just got to say as a disclaimer, oh, I'm sorry, didn't mean to get in there. As a disclaimer, uh, copyright disclaimer under uh, Section 107 of the Fair Use Doctrine, uh, while I do not own the video clips that were play, portrayed by WDSU, they were incorporated in this video for purposes of criticism as well as commentary and news so it would fall under the fair use doctrine so and I will put that disclaimer in the description as well now you guys let me know what you think about this do you think I'm just tripping on it do you think that there's legitimate concern with people who are uh, upset about this because honestly you know I think something like that that these Two presidents of the most respected universities in New Orleans, respected HBCUs. Now, you keep that in mind. They don't ask, you know, of course, we got Tulane here in New Orleans. You got Loyola. You got UNO. You know, I have not heard of UNO or any, or any LS, or, or Tulane or Loyola or even LSU for that matter, although that's in Baton Rouge, talking about doing an experimental study. Why is it just the HBCUs that are being thrown that way? Why is it just them? You know, of course, we have Suno down here as well. I don't think Suno uh, has participated in that. But, you know, it's just the HBCUs that they're volunteering for this. And I was listening to Brother Riza Islam. Shout out to him. He was talking about uh, in this clip uh, on Twitter about how HBCUs are actually uh, getting monies and donations from many of these different uh many different billionaires and so forth if you remember i believe the uh my, i'm looking at this uh mike bloomberg donated a hundred million dollars to four historically black medical schools xavier actually has one of the top pharmacy schools in the nation uh my dad's a pharmacist but actually let's look on twitter right quick and uh you know, listen to what Brother Risa Islam has to say about this. So, hold on. Breaking news, Brother Risa Islam here. This is something I wanted to let you all know. and something that I had a feeling they were going to do. Mike Bloomberg has now donated over $100 million to at least four or five historically black colleges, and particularly medical schools, so that they can have COVID-19 testing. This is their way of getting black folks to take these vaccines. To all of you, if you go to a college, share this. If you go to any one of these colleges, Morehouse, uh, Howard, or any of the other ones that are on that list, I recommend you send this video to them and let them know, do not, I recommend, you do not take these vaccines. 
It takes at least 10 to 12 years to test them fully. They have not even been tested for seven months. All seven of the vaccine manufacturing companies are all in lawsuits. They have paid for over a billion doses of these vaccines, which equals up to at least three doses and particularly three or six doses of vaccines for all of the people in the United States. These are experiments. Don't take it. King news. Now, to double on what Brother Reza Islam was saying, if you go actually to this story that I have here on abcnews.go, it actually states that Mackenzie Scott, who was the ex-wife of Jeff Bezos, she made a donation, and she's actually the wealthiest woman in the world with a net worth of $68 billion. She actually donated to six HBCUs, including, and you can look right here, Xavier University, Howard University, uh, Hampton University, Morehouse College, Spelman College, and Tuskegee. They received over $160 million total uh, in donations. Uh, my understanding here is that Howard received $40 million, Hampton received 30, Tuskegee 20, Spelman received an undisclosed amount. Uh, I don't see what the, uh, she actually gave to Xavier. So Xavier received, okay, I'm reading here. Xavier released a statement, and they received over, oh, sorry about this. Sometimes these ads just pop up, man. Uh, can't do nothing about it. Xavier received $20 million in a donation from a donor who wished to remain anonymous. Morehouse revealed in a statement on Wednesday that they received an eight-figure gift from Scott. So does that have anything to do with these COVID-19 vaccinations? And you see here she also gave to the Thurgood Marshall College Fund as well as the United Negro College Fund. I remember when the United Negro College Fund, you know, they're saying they were very popular at one point. If you remember, they used to do the Lou Rawls Parade of Stars, and Lou Rawls would do charity, uh, you know, uh, that was a charity event he was very much um, associated with because he would love to give back to the community and to black colleges uh, during that time. He performed uh, countless concerts for them. But uh, you guys let me know, what do you all think about this? Do you think that this is something that I'm just tripping over? Or do you think there's a legitimate concern about these donations and the monies that, uh, we are that these HBCUs are receiving? Do you think it has anything to do with uh, COVID-19 and vaccinations? So you guys stay tuned for the next video. I'll be dropping some more this weekend. You have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll holla. Peace.